everyone, it's Colin the Reptile Guy, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to create a cool naturalistic enclosure for your Scoliophindra suspenites or Viamini centipede. Alright, so the first layer should stay pretty moist, and what I'm doing here is putting topsoil in. You can get this at the Home Depot, any Home Depot or Lowe's. It retains humidity really well, it makes for a really great bottom layer of substrate. Because in the wild, these guys actually dig down. In the wild, these guys actually dig down to reach damper substrate. So it's actually not damp enough. You don't want it so damp that water is going to come out of it when you press down on it. But I do want it a little bit damper. So what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of dechlorinated water in here. It's going to be a couple of days before the centipede actually shows up. So it doesn't really matter that it's dechlorinated, but... Kind of get it all murky and muddy. This makes for a great bottom layer, like I've said, but you don't really want to mix, in my opinion, too much topsoil in because it stops with that really naturalistic, cool look. So for the next uh, part of the substrate, I'm actually working with sand and uh, peat moss. And what I've done is I've combined the two for a bit more of a, uh, a nice substrate for him to burrow into. This is going to be the next layer. Just really put a lot in there because this is a burrowing species. You need a lot of room to burrow. At least I recommend you keep them so they can burrow because that's just what they do in the wild. It's better if you don't see them if it means they're gonna live a happier life. Because you'll still see them, it just won't be as much. Okay, so I filled it up a bit more, kind of about a little more than halfway. What I'm gonna do next is build up a little bit of an embankment on the side. And you're gonna see that hopefully this is gonna be where uh, the centipede makes a burrow. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing, but this is the, the general concept. Gotta make enough room for a water dish. Pat it down so it's nice and tight. recommend letting it sit a couple of days too. Okay, so what you're gonna do next is get a piece of rounded cork bark or really any item that's rounded. I prefer cork bark because it just looks really cool and it's something that they use in their natural environment in the wild. And you're gonna kinda wanna jam it in here. I shouldn't have filled that bowl up with water already because <laughs> it's just gonna fall in. But. And hopefully this will be where the centipede starts its burrow. In the past, with me keeping Colopendra, they, t they uh, seem to do this. So hopefully they will for you too. And if you want, you can just tuck in on the sides underneath any little crevice so it looks more like a actual fallen branch and not just like something that you plopped in there. Mine actually didn't do it that bad, but I prefer it to look really nice. Okay, so next, what you're gonna do, if you wanna add on more, you're pretty much done now. But if you wanna make it look extra pretty, I picked up this thing, Equilateral Forest Floor. It's just a little kit, it comes with uh, some coconut fiber and some leaves. These are um, Ar Ardasia leaves. I'm probably mispronouncing that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of put some of that coconut fiber in here. I'll just kind of spruce it up a little bit. I don't wanna do it too much where it hides the substrate under it. And you can always move that around later, that looks good. And if you want, you can just use leaves from outside. Make sure that you uh, bake them first or put them in the microwave. So uh, no little pests 
are on there or parasites if you, uh, if you don't want those on your centipede. Lastly, to finish off, I'm going to be adding in a little bit of um, sphagnum moss. This isn't labeled as sphagnum moss. It's just called terrarium moss, as you can see. But this stuff helps retain the humidity really well. And something that you uh, want to know with humidity on centipedes is that you don't want to be keeping it too humid in there because that's going to actually cause the air to dry out and humidity is going to be sucked out of the centipede, uh, which can kill it. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for the enclosure. All that's left now is to wait for my package to be delivered and I'm going to add in the feed. All right, so I'm doing this with tongs now. Look at those legs go. Going in a water dish. Wow. So that about does it. That's how you take care of a Scoliopendra suspenis or a giant Vietnamese centipede. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And be sure to like, comment, rate, and subscribe.